We thank you so much. We really appreciate your time. I'm going to take my friends and go home now. Thank you. Yalla Sheikh, let's go. Bismillah. My brothers, my sisters in Islam, you promised. No screening. Screaming. No pushing. Don't push each other. We don't want to see anyone hurt. As we were entering actually on the right side, the sisters were dropped. Many sisters were pushing each other and this can injure people badly. So just relax. Uh, actually, the brother that I'm about to introduce does not need really an introduction. He's, to me, he's, even though I'm older than him by a few weeks, but I consider him my older brother. Because in action, he is truly a, a brother that I treasure. I consider him a family member, actually. And I don't want to talk too much in front of him about his goodness, but may I introduce you to my dear friend, Sheikh Dr. Mufti Ismail Mink. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahi wa alhamdulillahi wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Yesterday when I arrived in Entebbe and we came through to Kampala, I was worried that today all my brothers and sisters are going to gather at this freedom grounds at this wonderful, beautiful, more than a century old Makerere University. And I was thinking, what will happen? It's going to be hot. We are going to sweat. Oh Allah, make it easy for my brothers and sisters. So as we were coming today, I saw it started raining. I was asking our VC here that what is going to happen? We will navigate through the weather. But by the will of Allah, look at how those few drops that came have actually cooled us and calmed us so much that I can speak up to 8 p.m. and it will still be okay. Right? May Allah make it easy and grant us goodness and open our doors. My brothers and sisters, I am so delighted to be in your midst. And I am seeing beautiful faces filled with light and nur as Dr. Muhammad and Brother Wail have said. And I can feel the hearts filled with love. But you need to know the love of your creator should be more than the love of anything else and everything else. No matter how much you love your hair, for example, you love Allah more than that. So you will not do anything with your hair that will displease Allah. You love your clothing so much, but you love Allah more than your clothing. So you will not wear that which will displease Allah. Is that right? You love so much, so many different things. Everyone loves wealth. Who doesn't love money, for example, because it's something placed in the heart where you have to love nice things everyone likes nice things but we love allah more so we will never get to those nice things in a way that is going to compromise our relationship with allah if i love you alhamdulillah it should be for the sake of allah what does that mean it means i love allah more than i love you that's it i will not do something with this love that will end up in haram because I know that my love for my maker is more than that. I appreciate in Allah. You are a good brother. You are a good sister. We have a good connection. I pray for you. You pray for me. I will remind you where you are going wrong. When you see me, when you meet me, you will remember Allah. Because I will remind you of Allah and vice versa. That is called love in Allah. And those who love each other for Allah, Allah says, you will earn the best of this world. And the next, you earn a rank in paradise that is very, very high. So remember this, as much as all of us want to see success in this world, as well as the hereafter, the two are connected in the sense that you want true success. It has to be that you do not forget your hereafter. 
What's the point of having so much money but you stole it? What's the point of having all nice things but you took from someone else, you cheated someone, you deceived another person in order to get it? Is that success? You will never succeed. Today I'm seeing young faces, young brothers and sisters. I noticed those right at the end, those in the tent on my left, on my right, those at the back there, those who are right behind me here, the sisters, may Allah bless you and give you Jannatul Firdaus. You might be behind there, but trust me, you have a place in the heart that is one notch higher than those who are in front because they can see us. MashaAllah. I'm sorry about that. I have to acknowledge it. For them, their patience is more. I am standing here and wondering, inshallah, I will speak to you and we will share some good words by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I want to tell you something interesting. My worry, as I'm sitting here, I'm noticing some of the people right here, mashallah, the young boys, the young girls, alhamdulillah. And I'm thinking, how am I going to get from here to go back to my vehicle? I think I will have to just live in Kampala. Please allow us when the time comes to live respectfully. We love you, inshallah. But that does not mean we should hurt and harm. Going back to what we were saying, you are young. Trust me, the future is in your hands. How the world will move, how your family will move, how your community will move, how your country will move, depends on how you encourage one another to do the right things. If you do the right things, inshallah, it will progress forward it will develop it will grow up but if you are going to spew words of hate from your mouth they are as good as seeds that will germinate into into trees that will bring about destruction the cactus that which is not healthy does not provide shade and so on it's a seed watch your mouth when you talk about one another be careful how you talk about one another. You differ with your brother, watch out, speak respectfully. In Islam, we know there are so many different sects. There is this masjid, that masjid, these people, that mufti, the other mufti, another mufti, this council, that council, another council, all of these, they are part of the ummah. Watch your mouth when you are talking about one another. If you don't agree with someone, to disagree very respectfully, please, because we are worried about the future of the ummah. If you don't agree with someone, you, you can disagree, but disagree with respect. Don't lie, don't cheat, don't cause problems, don't swear each other. These are people, everyone makes mistakes and everyone does sometimes things that are not right. They need to be guided with goodness. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he loved us so much that when someone came and said things or did things that were not correct, he always corrected them in the most beautiful way. You know the story of a man who came and urinated where? In the masjid, not at Makerere grounds. He urinated in the masjid. What do you think you and I would do? I don't even want to say. But to be honest with you, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, spoke to him so nicely, so calm, so beautifully, because the idea is to build the ummah, to build the nation, to build the community and society. If you are going to swear that man, he has his small group of people perhaps, or he will be insulted to the degree that he won't want to associate with you anymore. Rather, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told him, you know what, this is the house of Allah. It is not fit to be urinated in. It is for the remembrance of Allah. It is for prayer. It is for Quran and so on. These things, we should not be doing them here. He was so happy with that advice. Similarly, when we have differences amongst us, be careful how you talk to others. Those who don't belong to your faith, be careful how you talk about them. When you disagree with something someone else from a different religion is doing, be careful how you talk about it. Be respectful even if you disagree. Disagreement is okay. I can disagree with you. You can disagree with me. That's fine. That is human. We will not ever 
agree fully with one another even if we are brothers from one mother and one father. Even if we are married and we are lovers, we love one another so much. But we can disagree on certain things because we are human. But the reality is, if we don't know how to navigate through that disagreement, we are going to cause major problems. Now, moments ago we heard about TikTok. A lot of us are on TikTok. There is a good side to it and there is a bad side to it. Unfortunately, the bad side is very quickly spreading. And the good side, a lot of people don't really interact much with it. Today, I want to invite you. Every time you see a good message on TikTok or Instagram or wherever else it may be, when you see a good message, like it, comment and forward it or repost it. You will get a reward. And what will happen? We will begin to change that particular social media platform towards spreading more good than bad. But sometimes you have people sitting there, they don't know anything. They don't work hard. They just sit there and talk bad about everyone else. So they speak bad about this one. They speak bad about that one. They speak bad about the other one. They say evil things and they are just sitting there. This one is like that. That one is like, you know, there are so many like these. Be careful. Don't allow yourself to become one of those and don't allow yourself to be impressed by one of those because they are not doing the real work. They are just sitting and pointing fingers at those who are working hard. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us strong. You need ethics and so do I. What are these ethics? There are so many things we can talk about to be upright, to be hardworking. Allah wants us to get up for prayer. When? The first prayer is before? Before the sun? Before the sun rises. Why? Because Allah wants you to get up and work hard. Start your day very early. Breathe the beautiful fresh air of the pearl of Africa. And you will notice something really amazing. Brothers, can, can we just wait for one minute? We just wait for one minute. Yeah, A few minutes, I will give you an indication. So, what happens? We breathe the fresh air of which place? Of which place? Of the pearl of Africa. Look at this pearl of Africa. Beautiful green trees. So much of oxygen. So much of beautiful air. I was sitting here. If some of you might have noticed me taking deep breaths. Because there was cool, beautiful wind coming. And I was looking at these trees as though I am breathing pure oxygen. Mashallah. Pearl of Africa. Mashallah. Mashallah. So, Allah wants you to get up early. So please get up early. Your day will be successful. Work very hard. Don't allow laziness to take over. Sometimes you know we are human beings. We love the bed and we love to waste time. Sit on your phone and just flick, 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 flick. Nowadays they are making it cheaper and cheaper and cheaper to flick. And so what happens? You become counterproductive. You don't produce anything. You are not productive in any way. You are contributing only to the warmth of your bed and nothing else. So one young boy told me, at least, you know, heat is energy. When I'm sleeping in my bed, I'm generating energy. I told him, come on, come on. How can you talk like this? Those are statements really of a failure. A person who wants to convince himself that I'm doing something meaningful when he's doing nothing. Sleeping, telling me the heat is generating energy. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. I wanted to tell him, why don't you connect a battery to your ears so that at least with that heat, you can use some, you know, some of that energy to ch recharge your phone. He started laughing at me. I said, you are laughing. It means you are talking a load of nonsense. May Allah forgive us. So you must get up to fight yourself and your bad habits is an act of worship. You know your bad habits. You know what they are. Some are involved in really... Bad things. Look, I give you an example. Brother Wael Ibrahim, my colleague from Perth, Australia, he is here today. Do you know before he used to be a singer, singing songs on a stage like this, with hectic music that was blasting from the left and the right. And he was one of those whom you would never have imagined. Today, he is a sheikh sitting here and telling you, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi. 
if we saw him before we would say la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-ali al-azim but today when we see him we say alhamdulillah alhamdulillah we are happy to have him with us because he has experience he has already tasted that life similarly he is a professional in dealing with behavioral addictions people who are addicted to pornography the number is big don't lie you don't need to put your hand up we are not here to shame people i'm not going to say those of you hooked on to pornography put your hand up because you know what that's not up to me to know who exactly it is but it is up to me to help you you are my son you are my daughter you are my brother no matter what bad habit you have you have an addiction get help please get help if you are addicted to the bottle you are an alcoholic you are a drug addict we don't hate you we hate your habit we don't hate you we want you to come back to produce something good you can still come we need you for the future this is why we have a team of people and our brother is specialized in that go and listen to some of his videos where he reminds you that you know the temporary pleasure the temporary pleasure that is derived from that which is futile that which is sinful that which is an abomination will never ever give you success it will actually do the opposite and it will bring you failure so if you have a bad habit work on it work on it without you working on it you are going nowhere if you are addicted to drugs you need help you need to understand reach out for the help don't be shy if you are an alcoholic if you are addicted to adultery some people are addicted to adultery do you know why we are living in a hyper sexual age everything is about sex everything you see around you is about sex like our brother said earlier they are showing you movies sometimes and the people there in the movies in most cases they are not going to teach you the beautiful way of involve your father involve your mother go respectfully get the proposal done get a good marriage done live happily with your children go to the masjid go to the to to allah almighty and try and connect with that doesn't happen in movies it doesn't happen in movies because the movie is seeking to pull the strings of your desires and lusts so that you can watch more movies when you see a movie where it is teaching you if there is it is teaching you that which is brilliant connected to your maker with beautiful morals and values people will say this is so boring there's no even kissing in this movie yes and the minute there is a scene of kissing or hugging or more than that everyone says wow did you watch the movie was it good it was good when i was young they used to say no under 18 when someone is kissing it was written in the movie no under 18 today from the time of birth kissing is okay what is kissing kissing they say what's what's wrong with kissing so you see how we have gone from alhamdulillah to astaghfirullah rather than going from astaghfirullah to alhamdulillah my brothers and sisters you are my children you are my brothers you are my family members what i am telling you today is only because we care for you we care for humanity these are good habits build yourself you are not useless you are not a waste of time you are not incapable but rather the opposite is true you are capable no matter who you are i was seeing a young boy here sitting in front i offered him water and he took the water and i saw how beautifully he was seated so calm so quiet as young as he is what is in my heart love i see a young sister sitting here mashallah covered in niqab and sitting quietly trying to see and what what does she want she wants to listen she wants she has come here to get something good so it's my duty as i see your faces many of you i acknowledged you am i right or wrong am i right or wrong even i acknowledge the one there right in the corner subhanallah rabbil alamin and i can see him there masha put your hand up right at the top there mashallah yes you alhamdulillah you see to be honest with you we acknowledge so i am here to tell you we need you please 
We need you in the Ummah. We need you in Uganda. We need you to help and develop the community, the society, and the country. And the way you are going to do that is by being the best possible person that you can. Develop good habits. With bad habits, what are you going to do? Nothing. I see the young boy, I promise you when he grows older, he will be successful because he's already interested in people who are going to teach him goodness and kindness and love and caring for one another. You care for one another. If I have water and I see you are looking thirsty, I will offer you my water. Why? Because I'm a person who cares. We care for others. If I am, something is happening to you, if I can, I would help you. Subhanallah. If I can, I will help you. Yes, what did you say? You want this jubba. You need to be a sheikh. Are you a sheikh? Allahu Akbar. You need to work for 14 years in the community without a jubba, then you will get a jubba, inshallah. Normally, those who ask me, I don't give them. But those who don't ask me, I can give them. So don't ask me and you stand a better chance, right? Inshallah. This one, you know what? This one, it's my first time wearing it. It looks new, right? Let me tell you. Because I wore it in the Pearl of Africa, I want to keep it for 10 years. Inshallah. Yeah. May Allah bless you all. May Allah bless you all. Wallahi, my beloved children, I tell you something. Like I said, you are not useless. You are not a waste of time. But you yourself need to realize it. Even if you come from a poor background, Wallahi, you can achieve when you realize that Allah has blessed me. Don't have an attitude where you think, no, I am poor. I can't afford this. I can't achieve that. Whatever you have, work hard. Go out. Try and achieve. Come again. Try this and try that. One day something will happen. Allah will give you victory. Man jadda wajada. Whoever works hard and tries, they will achieve by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The attitude that you have is very important. When you have a good attitude and a positive attitude, don't complain. Someone says to you, how is Uganda? If I meet you in Dubai or in Makkah or somewhere and I ask, you say, Salamu alaikum, wa salam, where are you from? You say, Uganda. I say, how is Uganda? What are you going to say? Whatever you say tells me so much about you, not Uganda. Because you either give me good news about your country or bad news. Don't you agree there are so many good things about Uganda? Am I right or wrong? But the people sometimes they only mention the bad things. You know why they say the bad things? Can I tell you? They want to justify why they are not there. That's why. So if you see someone in England or America, you say, how is Uganda? They'll say, ah... It's problematic. That's why I'm here. Right? But the weather is better than Europe. The air, there is the pollution here is nothing compared to elsewhere. I'm not saying don't worry about your pollution. We are youth. We are concerned about the future. We are worried about pollution. We will continue to look into ways of being more productive such that we can contribute towards the purification of the air. But we look at the positives. Uganda is a lovely place. We have fresh produce which is non-GMO. We have lovely communities of people of different faiths who live side by side in harmony, in peace. We are contributing to our nation. Yes, we have a few struggles, but alhamdulillah, every country has negatives, every country has positives. Takbir! Allah. You have a beautiful country, wallahi. You need to look after it. Right? You see, Sheikh, the Sheikh there, he's so happy because he knows what I said is right. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. May Allah bless you. So, we have a good play. Let's not complain and complain and complain. When I travel the world and I see people, they tell me I am from Uganda. First thing, I notice they are educated. Allahu Akbar. They speak English correctly. Another thing I notice when I see Ugandans anywhere and everywhere, they are hardworking. Am I right or wrong? So I am here to tell the youth to live up to that reputation and better it. Don't make it worse. When you grow older, people must say, you are hardworking, I work hard. I met some three, four youngsters just now at a restaurant that we visited. The father told me they are doing tahfiz. I told them, pray together 
and play together. That was my message. Pray together and play together. Why? Because when you pray together, those are the people who are worth playing together. They will not play in something haram. They will play in that which is okay, acceptable, and even that which is pleasing to Allah. But when you don't pray together, or you don't pray at all, you lost your connection with Allah. Let me tell you. Today we are here, thousands of people. We have our phones. Because we are so many, the internet connection is what? It's what? It's down. Am I right? Internet connection is down. How agitated are you? You want to put it on TikTok quickly. Today we saw Sheikh Mink, right? Today we saw Sheikh Muhammad Salah. First time we are meeting Wail Ibrahim. I want to put it quickly, but my connection is not working. I cannot wait to connect. Right or wrong? Now tell me which connection is more important. Your internet connection or your connection with the one who made you? Your connection with the one who made you. You should be equally agitated when you are disconnected from he who made you. You should be agitated. How come I didn't pray today? How come I didn't pray for so many days? How come I did something which was wrong today? You lost connection. If you lose connection, where are you going? We are more worried about our phones, wallahi, than we are worried about Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. So my message is, pray together, play together, work together, develop your nation together, contribute to the ummah together, and understand differences amongst us are normal. It is normal and human to have differences, but how you deal with those differences is what makes you or breaks you. If you know how to deal with each other, you will be able to help each other. You see someone, you say, you know what, this person has a business just like mine. He is my competitor, but he's my brother. Salamu alaikum, how is everything? All good. You say, yes, yes, all good. But he also has a store exactly like mine, next door to mine. So what? He's my brother. Allah will provide. But when I have a dirty heart, I want all the things that are good for myself. And I don't want it for anyone else. If that's the case, I will lose. My brothers and sisters in our communities, if I tell you, talk to me about the negatives of your country. Wallahi, you will count five or six things, not more. Try. Try now in your mind. How many things do you think in your country perhaps are negative? Someone might complain about economy. Well, the whole world is complaining, including the big nations. They are complaining about economy. Someone else might complain about this or that, about something here and there. People might complain. Let me tell you, you only have five or six complaints. But if I tell you, tell me the good things about your nation. Wallahi, the banana I ate this morning, sweeter than all the bananas of the whole of Africa. Yes. The banana I had, do you know that? No, you don't. Do you know why? You didn't taste the bananas in other countries. I'm telling you. I look at the fruit, the, 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 the pineapple you have is natural. Am I right? Did you inject it for it to grow like that? No. You are eating food that others would pay heavily to eat. And it's growing in your backyard. Come on. You are living in the pearl. Oh. Now you know. Make sure they don't call it the banana of Africa. Mashallah. Imagine if the bananas are so nice, how nice are the pearls? We need to see them still. I want you to realize this. I want you really work together with one another. Solve your problems. If you have a problem in your family, those who invest in solving problems are true leaders. They are true leaders. Those who invest in solving problems are true leaders. When you have a problem in your family, try, try again, try again. You see, there are three things. To try to solve a problem or to leave it where it is or to make it worse. Which one do you want? Solve it. So to solve it, an effort is required. Give and take. Apologize sometimes. You need to solve it. The same applies in your community. The same applies in the masjid in the Muslim Ummah. The same applies in your country. If there is issue, you will notice true leaders, they want to solve the problem. Those who are not leaders, they will create two problems out of one. How can that person be a leader? So you need to lead in your own circles first. 
Another thing, jobs. Jobs are scarce. Don't give up looking for a job. And in the process, try to do something. Buy and sell. Buy and sell. Try. Entrepreneurship, there is barakah and blessings in that. So sometimes you don't have a job because Allah wants you to get more than the $200, $500 you might get a month. Because He wants you to do your own business. Go wrong. So you can buy and sell. You can do a deal, another deal, a third deal. By the time you do five deals in the month, you made 10 times more money than the guy who has a good job. I'm not saying don't look for the job. Keep looking for the jobs. But sometimes Allah has chosen you for something else. Don't complain. Work hard to find the solution. And don't ever give up. Don't what? Don't give up. Just like when you have sinned, you commit sins and sins, Allah tells you, don't lose hope in my mercy, don't give up, come back to me. The same applies if you have failed in this world and you are going backward and you are losing things, don't give up, keep, keep trying. Try again, try here, try there. I know one brother who told me I applied for 45 jobs. 44, they declined me. 45th one, they took me in. And he says, I worked for two years. And I became a manager and I am now earning 9,000 US dollars a month. Imagine. But how many jobs did he apply for? 45 jobs. 45 jobs. How many have you applied for? Four or five. Ten times less. What are you going to get? Mashallah, the sister here is telling me, talk about prayer. Prayer. Wallahi, it's important. Ask Allah. Whatever you do. Ask Allah's help. Even if you are energetic, for example, you know you are intelligent, number one in the classroom. Before the exam, pray to Allah because he gave you the brain. I know I am intelligent. I know I work hard. I know that, mashallah, everything is amazing. I am, everyone knows me to be sharp and intelligent. But before I go for my exam, I must still pray to Allah. And after my exam, I must still pray to Allah. And I must still continue to thank Him for what He has given me. So don't ever take prayer out of the equation. Allah will grant you goodness. I have a question. Are you ready to hear it? The clouds covered us from the beginning of our get together today right to this moment. Now that the sun is out, does it mean we should close our meeting? No. Can we close? No. We can carry on. Mashallah. You see, that yes that I have heard now, it is indicative of the fact that, Wallahi, we want more and more goodness. What am I doing? I'm encouraging you to do what? Build yourself. No one is going to care for you if you don't care for yourself. You are alone sometimes. But it's short-lived because Allah is with you. Allah knows you personally. He knows your name. Maybe I don't know your name. Allah knows your name. And Allah knows exactly your problems, who you are, what you are going through. He will help you. So with the world, you might be alone. With Allah, you are not alone. As you grow older, do you think a person next door who has a job is going to tell you, sister, since you don't have a job and I have a job, let's share half of my salary. Can they do that? Never. They are on their own, you are on your own. Even though you are the neighbor, they will know you are going hungry. Sometimes they might not offer you anything. So remember, work hard. If you don't care for yourself, nobody is going to care for you. Don't feel self-pity. Get up. Allah bless you with your hands, your legs, your eyes, your noses. Help the others who perhaps don't have even that amount or even that much. Some people in our communities, they are challenged. They have disabilities, they have hardship. Some are widows and orphans. We are taught as believers that we should reach out to the widows and the orphans and give them some form of reassurance and help. Why? So that we can build community. It means the downtrodden, we should try and help them. But each one of those, we can learn a lesson from them because I have seen people without legs who are more determined than many of us who have both legs. I have seen people who are blind who are working harder than those who have two eyes like you and I. May Allah bless us. I have seen people who have no parents. They are orphans, but wallahi, they work so hard. I have seen widows single-handedly, the mothers raising children better than families where they are both parents. Congratulations to you. If you are widowed or divorced or a single mother, today we celebrate you. 
Today we celebrate you. Your struggles are real. You are my sister. We know that there are people like you. You are going through hidden struggles. Congratulations, you, my sister, are doing a better job than many of those who have both parents without the same condition of yours. Today we are here to tell you, my sisters who are struggling, never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Keep going because the day we meet with Allah, that is the day that you will be very happy. And even before that, Allah will grant you goodness. I know one case of a widow. She brought up two children on her own. The landlord chased her out. She couldn't pay rent. She said, I stayed under the bridge for a while. Then she went from being a homeless street person with the children to a little camp where they were keeping homeless people. She said, one thing I kept doing is to send my little one to school. We kept going. We kept sending the, my son to school. There came a time when he graduated from university. Someone had given him a scholarship because he was very intelligent and he became a doctor. You will never ever believe that there was a time when he was in primary school when they were based under the bridge on a highway in their country. May Allah Almighty grant us goodness and lesson from this type of determination. This lady was looking at the future. She knew today I'm struggling. But if I do the right thing, at least I will empower my kids. Look at her today. She's still alive. She's so proud of the children. But we are more proud of her because she did not give up. Don't give up. May Allah grant us goodness and ease. Month of Ramadan is approaching. And quicker than the month of Ramadan, guess what else is approaching? The end of my speech is approaching. So I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, let's turn to Allah in this beautiful month. We ask Allah goodness and ease and success. I just want this brother to bring me this thing here. Uh, if you can make a small space, just put it here on the side here. So uh, what I'm saying, this month of forgiveness, month of charity, month of goodness, month of closeness to Allah, month of fasting, month of determination, Mashallah, you will have to stand there. He wants me to sign this, right? Look, he made a thing to say, sign on my, sign, sign on my RT. Yeah, let's sign. Mashallah. Now he's asking for a selfie, you see. So I want to tell you something. Next time, if someone comes with a similar image or picture or something, putting it up, we are not going to choose them to come up, inshallah. We do it once. Yalla, Sheikh! You know what we say? We say one photo is courtesy, two is trouble. You take one picture, it's okay. You take the second one, you are troubling us. Now, Sheikh, you better... All right. Now I took his picture. Now you, you can take a picture with him. Inshallah. Mashallah. May Allah bless you all. So I, I want to do something. I want Brother Wael's camera, uh, or maybe Sheikh Muddathir, you can give me a camera. I want to do a selfie similar to my brother. You know, this brother is gifted. He's a very, very good controller of masses and public. You notice how he kept everyone quiet. He said, three, two, one. Mashallah. Okay. Oh, Sheikh, I can't touch this. It's an apple. The apple is bitten. Have you noticed? Look at the logo. It's a bitten apple. Yeah. Anyway, let's go. That's just a joke. Right. Here we are. Mashallah. Tabarakallah. Okay. We do a video from here. Mashallah, this is the pearl of Africa, Kampala, Uganda, Makerere Freedom, Inshallah, Makerere Freedom Grounds. We have all our brothers and sisters have been standing here for hours on end. And I really would like to appreciate all of you and I love you for the sake of Allah. See, there right at the back, there are so many seated in the tents all at the back there, Mashallah. Wallahi, we've had some amazing, beautiful time with you today. I appreciate your patience and I appreciate the fact that you stood here for hours. You know what? The saying in English, come rain, come sunshine. Today we have had both rain and sunshine. So here we are, mashallah, what beautiful, lovely people. 
Uganda, we love you. Mashallah. Barakallah fikum. May Allah bless you all. Jazakumullah khair. We meet again. When would you like to meet again? Inshallah. We will come back very soon. But I want to tell you one serious point. We will come back if you allow us to leave respectfully. That's all. Is that fair? Is it fair? So can we create a gap here, inshallah, like this here? We have to move back, move back here. And, and we create a gap up to there. If you allow us to leave with respect, we might even stay over. Who knows? Barakallah fiqh. May Allah bless you and grant you barakah and ease and goodness and grant forgiveness to all of us. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. You remember the three, two, one game? You remember? I say three, two, one. Can you take a step back? Three, two, one. One step. Watch. There are kids. There are small kids here. Three, two, one. Just open a space for us. As we walk here, we will look at you, say salam, smile, and walk ahead, inshallah. Barakallah fikum. Can we jump? MashaAllah, Barakallah Fiqh, Jazakallah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا. ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا. ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به. واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب أمين. ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين أمين. وجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا إننا سمعنا مناديا ينادي للإيمان أن آمنوا بربكم فآمنا ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار أمين. اللهم اجعل تجمعنا هذا تجمعا مرحوما أمين. واجعل تفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما أمين. ولا تدع فينا ولا بيننا ولا منا شقيا ولا محروما ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار أمين. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه الأخيار سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك جزاكم الله خيرا كثيرا Thank you so much. Thank you so much.